Alright, so here I have a Fortec 2.0. So I'm going to be using this to compare it to the 3.0, which I will be unboxing two of them. And I do have a GT body to compare. This one here is the Mustang body, the one I've been uh, using the most. But we're going to get started. So this 3.0, this is actually uh, one of my friends. So this is my buddy Gary's. Uh, you can follow him on Instagram at racing underscore heart underscore RC. Uh, so he wanted the red one. So that's the one he wanted. And the colors that are generally available will be red, blue, and this uh, dark one. I believe it's black or it might be a really, uh, really dark gray color. So I'm going to go ahead and move that box over there. That one is mine. And we're going to start with the red one. Now they're both going to come with the uh, same items. I just want to do a comparison in color as well. And the car's upside down. Let me go ahead and flip it. And we have a beautiful, beautiful looking car. Uh, this one here, now I have seen this one in person before. Uh, these are very well packed. So underneath the car, you're gonna get the general uh, bag of goodies. Uh, I'm gonna leave this bag closed. I will be opening up mine. Uh, but right now, let me go ahead and get the snips and we'll go ahead and release the car. So I'm going to go ahead and take these out. We'll just recycle that plastic. And here's one of the vehicles. So I'll save the cardboard for him. And I'm going to go ahead and unbox mine and then I'll unwrap everything. Now, if you have seen uh, one of my other videos uh, when I was looking at the Fortec 3.0 for the very first time. It was actually the same exact color. You saw the body mounting system, which is very different. All right, so here we have one. And mine is actually a special edition, which is a silver Corvette. Now, one quick little thing, special editions for Traxxas, uh, generally, it's a color that they come out with, but eventually they will release it as regular production. So just to give you an idea, this Ford GT, when I bought it, this was a special edition color, and then shortly after, it just became a regular color. So that's something Traxxas does. So right now, this silver is a special edition. At some point, it'll be a regular edition, I'm sure. Now the transmitter, this is my transmitter. The transmitter that comes with these vehicles is a TQ. So this is just a TQ transmitter. It's not the TQI, uh, so it's just your basic transmitter. Uh, these are the transmitters that used to originally come with the Fortec 2.0, so something like this. Now uh, the 2.0s that I bought, I actually bought with the TQI, uh, which used to be GT only, uh, and then they started offering up it on the Mustang as well. Uh, keep in mind there used to be a price difference back with the 2.0. The current 2.0s are about $300 uh, with the TQI. If you just purchased the TQ, I believe it used to be about $260, $270 roughly. So that may be a future option for these cars over here. All right, there we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and move that off to the side. 
remove these plastics. All right. Now in the bag, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the bag. Uh, if this is the first time you buy a Traxxas, this is generally what you get. Uh, if you purchase Traxxas vehicles, it's the same, same thing. Uh, so if you have a 2.0, it'll be the same. You're gonna get some tools. So if you don't have any tools, these are your little Allen wrenches, uh, and then the little nut cross there. And you will get these spacers for the springs on the shocks and then also different pistons, uh, so you can redo your shocks as well. Uh, so you're gonna get these little uh, spur trees here, and you're gonna get an optional pinion gear. This is going to be for speed runs only. If you do races with this, you'll probably burn up the motor. So not recommended. All right, other than that, uh, you can register your product. You're gonna get a uh, manual. I recommend that you read it. This one here, this is the one that you need. Uh, this one has the basics. So if it's your very first time into RC, uh, look into this manual and read everything that you need to do. I'm gonna cover some of the basics here. Uh, and obviously some other accessories that you can buy uh, from Traxxas, such as a TQI transmitter and telemetry options, as well as batteries and chargers. So here we go. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get started with the silver one. And this looks like regular saran wrap. Uh, the previous models, the 2.0, uh, they used to come with an actual plastic bag. Uh, but here is the silver, so let's go ahead and unbox the red. And this is such a beautiful red color. Uh, I decided to go with the silver because my daily driver is a silver car. That's the reason why. Uh, but this is a beautiful red color. My friend does love red. Uh, so as you can see, here is the car. And something, if you did not watch the other video, uh, you, we have these two clips. We have a clip here in the front, and we have a clip here in the rear, right in there. Those are the clips for the body. So all you have to do is you pull on those clips. So your fingers just go in there and you're pulling outwards. So rear, forward and then the body is just going to come right off. And the engine here, this area, you will feel that it's quite heavy. It's actually pretty heavy here in the rear, uh, which is something to note about these cars, but they look amazing. I mean, that engine is beautiful. Such a beautiful engine. The detail on here is great. If you look at the mirrors, the mirrors are fabulous. Uh, right in there, the front grille. And again, you can install some LEDs. So if you want some headlights, you can install the LEDs. Uh, some in the rear as well. You can even have turn signals in the rear. So the detail on these bodies is beautiful. There's multiple parts. You do get a rear uh, clip here and a separate wing. Now the previous uh, 2.0, uh, they also were multiple part bodies that you would have. Uh, so that hasn't changed, but there is a lot more detail with the Corvette. Something that I want you to, to notice is the difference in length. Uh, there is a slight difference here between them. Now I'm going to go over some, uh, just, uh, basic comparisons, uh, because I will be swapping the body from the GT and the Mustang. Uh, but here they are. Uh, it, uh, it may not seem like much, but there is somewhat of a difference. If I take this body, try placing it here, well, it's not gonna fit because of the mounting system uh, and the wheelbase, but you can get an idea for the difference in the length there between the two. So even if I put it toward the front, well, it won't be able to because of the rear clip. But this is the chassis for the 3.0. And for now, I'm gonna go ahead and put this body on and I'm gonna look at the silver one and take the, the silver one's the one that I'm gonna work with, mainly because I don't wanna scratch up the red one. So silver one, we have the silver one right here. So if you look at the silver, 
I'm gonna go ahead and place the Mustang right next to it. So this is a 2.0, 3.0. Uh, one of the obvious differences between the two is this one's new and this one's used. I'm kidding, it was a joke. Uh, but notice the wheel uh, diameter. So there is a difference in the wheel diameter between the two, and it's a significant difference. Uh, we do have the measurements from Traxxas. This was in the 70s uh, when it came to millimeters, 76 I believe it was. I don't want to stick my head under the camera. Actually, 67, almost 70. Uh, and this one is lower 60s. Let me just make sure I was looking at that correctly. Oh, just over 70. This one's probably about 73. Uh, in my other video, I actually give you the actual measurements. So this one's just over 70, and this one's somewhere close to mid 60s. Uh, there is a length difference between the two. So if I were to place the cars here and just place my ruler under here and I'm measuring the body. So just an estimate here again, I do not want to stick my head under the camera. Uh, we are looking at about uh, 49 centimeters roughly for the silver car, which is the 3.0. And the Mustang, we are looking at uh, just under 46. Uh, so we're looking under 46, that looks about, uh, let's see, 45.7 approximately. Uh, width, well, uh, for this I'm going to measure the tires. So the width of the front, so the front track is about 19.7 roughly, and the rear is about 19.9 versus the 3.0, which is the newer version, is just over 20. We're looking at about 20.4 for the front and the rear. We are looking at approximately, I can't really see, uh, that's about 20.1 for the rear. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the body, the silver body. And again, beautiful, beautiful, very detailed bodies, front, rear, every aspect of this. This is just such a well-designed vehicle. All right, and here we go. So we have this little literature and we can read that at another time. Do read it. If it's the first time you have an RC, do go ahead and read it. You do get this larger foam in here, so that's something to note. And there is a cutout. This is for your wires. So if you're using a Traxxas battery, for example, your wire would go there. And this is already glued on. I'm going to go ahead and leave that there. And let me go ahead and remove the body clips from this one. And remove the body. And here we have the 2.0. So if we place them next to each other, this is one of the differences that you will see. So I have the hubs right in here that are lined up uh, right there, uh, center to center. So you will see the difference. Now really, the difference you want to measure is this here, the wheelbase. Uh, so there is a difference in wheelbase. And what I'm gonna do for the purposes of this, I will put this car here and I will do my best to measure from uh, the center of one spindle to the other. So we are looking at approximately, let's see, that's about 25.8. And if we look at this one over here, we are looking at approximately 29.2. So there's quite a difference. Now the tubs, if we flip them over, uh, well, what you have to look at first is notice all of this. This is just like this right here. And this rear part is just like this part over here. So really the only thing that happened is the tub got longer. And the question is where did it get longer? Right here. So if you look at these two screws and you look at this one versus these two screws and this one, that is where you will be noticing the difference. So if we were to just grab something to create a straight line. And I'm gonna go center to center. So this is part of the Traxxas literature. 
and then measure, take an approximate measurement to the center of that screw, we are looking at approximately 5.3, 5.2, 5 5.3, 5 versus here, we are looking at approximately 1.9. And that's, that's where you get the difference. Other than that, if you compare these two screws, those two, the distance between them, uh, the distances are uh, the same. So really, this just extended. And the reason why there is that extra screw right here, notice this one doesn't have one, is because now we have this center support here. So we have this support, there is a ball bearing in there, and that's because we now have a longer shaft. So if you look at that shaft, look at this shaft, there is a difference in length. Now, other than that, everything looks very similar. If you look at the dampers, dampers, they look the same. There's no difference. If you look at the rear of the two vehicles, right? Those differential housings look the same again, right? That rear diffuser also the same. Uh, so if you look at to, into the actual drivetrain, everything is the same except for that center part. Motors, Titan 12.5, right, so the 550 series. ESC, also XL5. Uh, the receiver box, uh, the servo, we have the same servo. You're not gonna be able to see, but it's a 2075, which is a standard Traxxas servo. So these two cars are actually very, very similar which means that at some point I would not at some point I would not be surprised if Traxxas comes out with a VXL model of this. Luckily I do have a VXL system that later in a future video I will swap in and see how it does. First I need to do uh, some speed runs in future videos about this car just stock compared to the 2.0 and then I'll start modifying a few little things because I know some people are going to be interested in doing speed runs. And I'm curious how the body will hold because this body will just go up in the air. Uh, you have to add a wing to the rear, which I've done in a different body that I used to have. So the Corvette, I'm wondering if it will be more aerodynamic, better for higher speeds, especially with this front splitter versus this one or not. Uh, but before I go into a little more details, let me go ahead and just put the GT body on top. So, oh. Uh, I cannot because I have these here, but anyway, I uh, just realized I have the Mustang mounts, so I'm not going to be able to mount it, but we do have the bodies here, so you can see the size difference. There is a bit of a size difference between the two. Uh, this one here is a 110 scale. This one uh, wasn't given a scale. I'm not sure what they call this. Maybe it's a 1 to 9 scale. Uh, there is a subtle difference not that much. Something that I want to note is the following. So again, I'm going to be looking at the front truck uh, track, front track for this. And I'm going to go ahead and take an approximate measurement. Uh, this is 19.8 approximately, so 19.8, so we have to remember that number. Oh, my cameraman remembers it, and this one 19.5, I'm reading 19.5, maybe I misread it the other time, uh, so 19.5. Well, let's go ahead and remove the front wheels. So if we remove the front wheels, I'm just going to go ahead and swap them out. Uh, put these on the other car, and then the other cars on this one. And I'm going to show you the similarities. I would say the differences, but it's really the similarities at this point that I want to focus on. And let's go ahead and do the same thing for this. One thing that you can notice is this wheel is a lot deeper. So notice how the driver goes in farther. And I will show you that with the other wheel in a bit. Uh, 
And in my very first video where I talked about the 3.0, I mentioned that the offset appeared, based on the images and the measurements that were there, appeared to just be on the wheels and everything else was a 2.0 carryover. Well, I mean, if you look at that, they're the same. So I could use these wheels. Let's just say I had a cool truck body and I want to run the small wheels in the front and uh, larger wheels in the rear. I can do that. Uh, so let's see, that's there. So here, I oh, here we go. All right, perfect. So uh, there we go. So we're looking at about uh, 20.1 roughly, which is the same as the other. And now, just for fun, let's go ahead and take the other wheels. And we will do this. And we're looking at about 19.5. So again, the front and the rear is the same. It's the same from the 2.0 that carried over to the uh, 3.0. And to be honest, why not? Uh, there might be some people disappointing, disappointed saying, why didn't you just design a whole new car? Well, th there's no point. This one works. Why would you change something that works? Uh, what I want you to notice also is the wheel. There's the driver versus that one, how deep it goes. So the offsets in the wheels, that's what makes it wider. Something else is the following. Uh, don't really want to disassemble the entire thing. Uh, but if you look at the screws, as I mentioned, I could remove this entire front end and put it here. Uh, I'm actually uh, not going to do it uh, because I don't want to do it. Ah, uh, fine, I'll go ahead and do it. You talked me into it, you talked me into it, fine. Fine, I'll do it. You're right, it's not that many screws. So, gonna go ahead and take this off. Uh, so if you are buying a 3.0, for example, and you wanna know how to work on it, if you actually watch my uh, teardown videos of a 2.0, uh, you will get a very good idea. So on this one, I'm probably not going to make a full teardown video, uh, mainly because it's the same as a 2.0. The Well, with the exception of the center shaft. Or maybe I will, um, because I also cannot assume that everybody knows it's the same as a 2.0. Keep in mind, if this is your very first RC, well, you have not owned the other one. So here, I just removed these two screws here, and I removed these two screws there. And now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull on this. And then, uh, oh, uh, hold on. Let me try to remember. It's been a while. Uh, yes, it should be the center one. So this one over here, I believe, is for the steering box or receiver box, which is where the steering goes. Here we go. And then the links, I will have to remove the links, but let's see. There we go. All right, so I have to remove the links. I'll take them off now. Let's see, don't want to remove the entire steering. I just want this. All right. See, this is what happens when you don't want to stick your head under the camera. All right, well, let's go ahead and remove these. And then I'll keep these off to the side so they are in order. And I do like the 2.0 platform, so I am actually glad uh, the 3.0 is the same uh, for a variety of reasons. Let's see, what is holding on? Oh. All right, just remembered. 
It's this rear one. I can't remove this brace without the steering. That's the reason why. All right, so I removed two screws that I did not need to, but that is all right, not a big deal. As long as you figure it out before you break something. There we go. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and remove this here, so I'll free the servo. Right here, so this is the front end and notice the shaft, right? It's the same design right in there. All right, so that being said, let's go ahead and tear this one down. Not completely, just the front end. There's no need to remove these as the whole thing's going to come out. So it's just these, these two here should be those three screws. And then the one for the steering arm. Well, steering linkage. But here we go. All right. Those are removed. Just goes to show you how long it's been. Let's go ahead and remove this one. All right, so steering is free. And the fourth screw. How did I miss that one? I said three screws and I only removed. There we go. All right, perfect. So that's that front end. Now I'm gonna grab this front end. This is from a 3.0. And we're gonna go ahead and slide this in. And now that it's in there, there we go. So all I was doing was locking this wheel with this hand while I turn this to turn the shaft to make it slide in. But anyway, other than that, it clipped on. So all I have to do now is screw this in here, put that screw in. Well, these, these I should have never removed uh, in, in all honesty. So let me go ahead and just put those in there just so I have something better to show you. And for those of you getting an RC car for the first time, or at least a hobby grade RC for the very first time, something that you're gonna be working on, uh, something very important, do not over tighten any of the components. Many of these are plastic, you will ruin the thread in the plastic, then you will just have to replace the part. Sometimes you can use some CA glue, super glue, uh, to try to fix that and rethread it, but it's not the same. It's a temporary fix, but it's not the same. Uh, all right, well, I'm not going to install the uh, whole thing, but as you can see, the linkage would just go in there. We just have to install that screw, these three screws, and that is it. So we have the 3.0 on here. So this is something important. Parts are going to come out for this car soon, very soon, as of this video. So if you do want, if you have a 2.0 and you, you want a 3.0, you could just buy a body, the tub, with the battery tie, the center shaft, and then this, uh, I forget what this is called, harmonic belt, no, uh, 
I forgot what this bearing is called here uh, at the moment, this center carriage bearing, carriage bearing. I think that's what it is. Uh, you would just buy that and then you can just swap the centers and you will be good. But uh, if it, it's, it's the 3.0 is anything like the 2.0, this body alone was about $100. So if you think about this body, this was about $100. I do not remember how much the tubs are, but they're not that expensive. Uh, so let's say you're looking at about $150 to convert your car, not including the mounts. So once you include the mounts and the bumper, you are probably sitting at about $200 to convert your car. So here's one of the things to consider. This uh, Fortec 3.0 is about $330. If you have a Fortec 2.0 uh, and you plan on converting it, be prepared to spend Actually, it'd be more because you have to buy wheels and tires. Uh, so if I said about $100 for the body, and it's probably going to be more because this was $100 and that one has far more detail, but say $100. And then once you buy the tub, everything in the center, that's another $50 uh, at least. Uh, but let's say $50. And then you're looking at uh, wheels and tires. Uh, so you're going to be looking at uh, anywhere from $200 and $250 with bumpers and body mounts because it's a new mounting system. 200 to $250, I'm gonna go more for $250. If you already have a Fortec, it's not really worth converting your Fortec and the reason why is you could sell your Fortec assuming it's in good shape for let's just say maybe $200. Uh, if you sell it for 150, you would be breaking even. So at that point, you're, you are better off if you have a TQ system on your Fortec 2.0, just leave it as is, just get the 3.0. If you have the TQI system in your 2.0, you're better off buying the 3.0, swapping the systems, and then selling your 2.0. Although I would say, just get them both, keep them both. Uh, but from an economic perspective, just money, I do not think it is worth converting a 2.0. It will not be worth converting a 2.0 to a 3.0, although it is possible. Unless in the future you get the parts used uh, somewhere, maybe uh, it may be worth it, but that's something to consider. So if you're debating right now whether you want a 2.0 and later convert to a 3.0, it is not worth it. The price currently is about a $30 difference uh, between the two. So that is something to consider. But other than that, uh, as you can see, I went ahead and added the front end. I did not screw it on all the way, but it fits, it matches, and your body, uh, the wheels are going to rub. Uh, so it, 200 millimeter bodies are not gonna work with those wheels and tires, but it, some of the truck tires, for example, the NAS trucks, uh, those NASCAR trucks, Sometimes we're a little wide, so you may be able to run some of these wheels in the back. And that's something to consider. So those are the really the differences between the 2.0 and the 3.0. As you can see, the electronics are identical. You're really just looking at wheels with a different diameter, different offset, a different front bumper system, and a different system to mount the body. This, the 2.0, so you can see here has the old system with body clips that you stick on, stick off. And the new one has those clips that are integrated into the body. As you can see right there, you can see the tabs. Those you just, this is where it clips on, clips off. That is it. So other than that, it's really gonna be your choice. But let me go ahead and assemble the bodies, the cars real quick. And I'm gonna do, just to end everything, let's see how long it takes me to assemble reassemble. Uh, I want to weigh them so that there's a weight comparison. Now this, is, this weight comparison will be to give you an idea and the reason why I say it's more to give you an idea is mainly because uh, this car I've already used so it is somewhat dirty uh, because I need to clean it so I was just running it uh, and I was just tearing it up but anyway that's a different story. Uh, yeah, I, I really like the Fortec family. Uh, well, 2.0 and now the 3.0, I'm sure I'm going to love as well. Uh, I'm optimistic, I'm looking forward to it. Until I crash and I crack something. 
which will be for a later review. We'll see how that works out because these are very durable 2.0s. Uh, but I will be making a weight comparison just to see what the weight difference is because that will affect the speed of the car. If you have the same electronics, you're gonna have to have different gearing, which I'm sure there is a different gear. Uh, that's probably what I should do. Uh, maybe I will open the transmissions, pull the motor and see what gear is in there for you as well. I keep saying I'm only gonna do one thing and then I end up doing 20 billion things. Uh, but I need to put all the screws first in here. We'll do the steering at the end. All right, we have that. Let's go ahead and do the brace. Now, a long time ago, I used to have a team associated uh, TC3 and later I had a TC4. Uh, TC4 was great. They were very lightweight. The only problem is uh, you crashed and that was it. Uh, I'm not sure if any of you have experience with those. Uh, if you're new to the RC world, uh, maybe uh, you've never seen one, uh, or if you're coming back, maybe you had one. Uh, just comment below, what did you think of that platform when it came to uh, bashing, let's say, just having fun. Racing, they were great platforms for racing. Uh, you just have to be careful. Fortec, uh, Fortecs are, uh, I'm gonna say, more forgiving in that aspect. Uh, I do have two uh, 2.0s. Uh, this is a fully stock one. And then the other one is the one that I've swapped the motor. The other one's the one that I've taken up to, well, according to the, to the Gypsy uh, GPS, it uh, can do 70. Uh, it, I've not gotten it over 70, but I don't know if it's a problem with the tires. Maybe the tri tires do not get enough traction, and I would not be surprised because the car does want to lift at that speed. Well, long before that speed, I'll be honest. Uh, so that is something to consider. Uh, getting a different body if you're going to be doing speed runs. Now, this little barrel, I can't really seem to line it up right now. Here, let me do this. I'll do it off camera really quick as I talk to you because it's a little difficult to assemble things when I can't really uh, see in there. Uh, but here we go. Nope, still not cooperating. So I can't really blame that. Oh, here we go. Perfect. Now I'm gonna set it down. And there's the steering. So that's the, the other thing too. Uh, notice it didn't really take me much time uh, to remove the front end and reinstall it. Uh, so that's one thing about these cars that they are relatively easy to work on uh, compared to other models uh, that are out there and models that I've owned. All right, just need to Move that shaft. All right, we'll do it this way. There. All right. Let's see. Let's do the bottom ones first. We'll place that one there and this one here. And again, it's the same screws. So this is one of the nice things. If you already have a 2.0 and you're thinking of just getting another uh, touring car and you're debating on whether you should get a 3.0, a 3.0 would be a good idea from the perspective of uh, the modularity. Uh, since most of the parts are interchangeable, you would not have to stock parts for say a whole other vehicle, truly mainly because if generally the way you run, uh, you tend to break a particular part, say arms, uh, well, they use the same arms. But again, they're very durable. Uh, they don't break easy, easily. All right, so we have the bottom in. Now we have to deal with the top and then I'll put the wheels. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to weigh them without the body 
Then I'm gonna put bodies on there. Now, uh, I am gonna just kind of set the GT body. Maybe I'll weigh the bodies separately uh, because the mounting system is different on the Ford GT and the Mustang, and there is a difference in mass. Uh, there's probably at least 10 gram, a 10 gram difference between the two mounting systems, at least. It might be closer to 20, to be honest, uh, between uh, the Ford GT and the Mustang. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. So I may just weigh the bodies separately. Do have a little bit of Velcro here, but it's not going to add much. Um, and then a little bit of Velcro on the Mustang body uh, where I mount the GPS. Well, where I've mounted the GPS. So shouldn't be that much, even if we account for uh, three grams total. and one more wheel all right I will have to remove the mat and the reason why is the this foam it may not seem like much but that little bit of foam here will actually throw off the scale and that's something to consider whenever you're weighing vehicles. So let's just say you are new to racing and you're getting a car ready. If you weigh it on foam, it's gonna make it seem as if your car was lighter than it truly was because the foam is going to be absorbing some of that weight. So this is a good enough surface for the purposes of this. So this is the 2.0, we're gonna mount the 2.0. And the 2.0 comes in at about 1,285 grams, so 1,285. Keep in mind that the tires are a bit worn, uh, but then again, it is dirty, so that will even out. And this one comes in at 1,430 grams. So there, there is uh, quite a difference between the two, 1430 versus uh, 1285. We are looking at uh, just under 200 grams, 195 grams, this one being heavier. Uh, so that is maybe about 8%, I would have to calculate everything, but say 8% more for the same drivetrain. Uh, now, if we look at the bodies, the Ford GT body comes in at 187 grams for the Ford GT body. And these are pretty heavy in the rear. Whereas the Mustang body, now again, we can reduce, say, uh, three grams because of this. And all the dirt there, probably another 10 grams, I'm kidding. Uh, this one is 153, let's say 150 grams for this one. And now for the Corvette, which is really heavy in the rear, 342 grams. So that is something to keep in mind. Uh, the Ford, uh, sorry, uh, the 3.0, so the Corvette 3.0, has a body that's 343. So 343 versus the GT, which is 187. So that's a big difference. And then once you account for that 195 difference, you can see how the Stingray is gonna be a much heavier car. So uh, I am anticipating it to be slower. But then again, uh, we don't really know because the gearing may be different and may be enough to compensate. Maybe enough to compensate uh, and then the diameter maybe will make up for it. So just right now, just for fun, I know I probably could have looked uh, online to find the number, but well, it's only four screws. 
So I'm going to go ahead and remove the four screws and just look at the pinion. And then I'm going to see what the pinion is. Uh, I do not remember what the 2.0 pinion is in all honesty. I do not remember if it's a 19 or a 23. Uh, those are common pinion sizes that Traxxas uses in different vehicles, and that's the problem. Uh, I, I've had too many Traxxas vehicles. I'm kidding, there's no such thing as too much, unless you can't store them safely. Uh, all right, this pinion certainly looks smaller, and uh, there is no visible number, so I will have to try and count, and I'll probably lose count. Uh, but let's see. The easiest way, to be honest, to count uh, pinion is if you have a marker, for example, this is black, if you have a silver or white marker, you just, every time you, you count, you mark a tooth. That's the easiest way. So we're looking at about 18. So to put these back in, just stick the wires in there. You can also remove this cover. Uh, there's, it's just a screw, these two screws on the bottom, and then you slide them in. Uh, but this will just go in there. Uh, and I, I'll worry about this later, just, don't want to make this, I want to just get to this pinion, this other pinion, really quick. So we have an 18. We're going to see this one over here. It may actually be somewhat similar. Maybe I'm thinking 19 because that may be the slash pinion. Keep in mind that this motor is used on many of Traxxas vehicles. All the base models have this motor uh, for uh, non-crawler vehicles. So if you look at short cores, they're small mo monster trucks, uh, and by that I mean the Stampede. They generally have this, so slashes, Stampedes, Rustlers. Ah, oh, this is much larger. I can already see that it's much larger. I don't have the number. All right, let me try it again, see if I don't skip a tooth. Which is not much, and the spurs, this one I, I remember being somewhere in the 70s, the number's on the other side, uh, 70. Yes, so this is a 70 spur. This one appears to be the same size, but I could be wrong. Uh, this is 72. I'll just check this one over here. So there's a difference in spur. No, this is 70. All right, so that's the other difference. So we have a 70 spur, uh, 21 pinion. This is a 72 tooth spur uh, with a 19 pinion and uh, 72, so if you wanted more uh, torque or something, you could swap these over. Uh, but other than that, uh, other than that, uh, that's what I have for you. And if you have any questions, uh, just let me know. If you have any comments, uh, go ahead and comment. And just for now, we'll go ahead and Place the bodies on top, just so you get an idea. And we're gonna go ahead and put the Mustang on here and I will assemble everything off camera. But here we go. And that's the GT. Don't forget this awesome red color as well. So other than that, thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and comment below. Oh, 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 oh,